who's the top coach in the world? Tony Robbins, right? Like Tony Robbins is like the right. he's behemoth of a business of, of coaching business. Do you think Tony Robbins gives, gives a fuck whether or not you like him? No. How's it going, everybody? Xander Fryer, CEO and founder of High Impact Coaching, here with our uh, director of operations, the amazing Joshua Church. Joshua, how you doing, brother? Hey, guys. Hey, Xander. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Um, so, Joshua, uh, today I'm really excited for this interview because uh, we're going to be digging deep on leadership. Uh, and you've got some amazing stories from gallivanting around Sweden with Wim Hof expeditions and shit like that. Um, but I, I think, you know, uh, to, to most people, you look, uh, you look young, but, um, you know, I think that doesn't help people understand how wise you really are and how great of a leader you really are. You're one of the best leaders that I know, uh, regardless of age, which is obviously why uh, we love having you on the team and leading our team and leading our clients. Um, but uh, I, I think you've got a lot to impart on people in terms of leadership. Um, which we'll dig into in just a second. But this all started from your, your little Wim Hof expedition. Um, so I'd love to kind of start by hearing a little bit about your Wim Hof expedition to, to Sweden, if you would. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. Um, it actually started three years ago when I started working with this crazy dude named Xander Fryer. Who was well, that was a huge <laughs> mistake. <laughs> it was uh it was definitely a leader and it helped me uh kind of fully start to step into my own leadership potential and um and it really does start with leading yourself first yeah. this idea of personal leadership so that you can lead others and ultimately lead leaders so um so so thank you for for that it's been it's been a, it's been a fun journey so far um so in sweden yeah i was doing a, a gallivanting off in sweden as you say doing a wim hof expedition diving deeper into the breath work into cold immersions and cold exposure mindset techniques all just designed to bring you deeper into the body and, and really feeling and realizing that full potential that we as human beings are capable of yeah. so really powerful work beautiful things a lot of getting out of your comfort zone a lot of getting out of your comfort zone and look for me like i, I always had to fear the dark i was just scared of the dark growing up i always had a nightlight yeah. And, uh, and cold. I just didn't like cold. I grew up in San Diego. Yeah, say, that's why you grew up in San Diego, man. Exactly. I have a photo of you and I on the beaches of Tulum with just, just sand in <laughs> our beard and hair, just like sand monsters. And I know you're the same way too, where we're like, I, I consider myself a sun creature. I love the sand, the warmth and, and daylight. I love the sunshine. And, um, and I always had a little bit of uh, anxiety around like cold temperatures. I would get cold really easily. And so what better way to confront that than going to Sweden around the winter solstice, the darkest and coldest time of the yeah. year. So the daylight, there's only about four or five hours of daylight each day. The rest was in darkness, which was pretty crazy. Yes. So one, one, of the, um, one, of the, one of the challenges, the adventures we did with a group of about 14 of us, we, uh, we hiked down to a different lake. We were staying on one lake. And when we, first, when we got to the first lake, the first night we took axes and actually smash the frozen lake so we could have a little swimming hole to go dip into. Jesus. And we, so we went to the second lake and it was beautiful sunset right around 3 p.m. <laughs> Great time for sunset. And, uh, and we learned for our, our challenge was to be doing a, a group immersion. Yeah. Meaning that the whole group of 14 of us were going to get in one circle, linking arms, and then do a, a, like a five minute um, full body immersion. And, uh, and so we were learning this, but like, okay, great. Minute, full body immersion in a frozen lake. Correct. Yes. And this is, this is, so this is right at freezing temperatures, zero degrees yeah. Celsius. Um, and, uh, and then our, our group leader asked the, the question, who wants to lead us in? And it went silent. And it must have been a, not more than another, a, a couple seconds before I had this, this voice whisper in, like, I felt my intuition whisper, leaders go first. Yeah. And at that moment, I just shouted, I'll go, I'll go first. And I was kind of surprised that I said that as yeah. well. Like, as it kind of came out, I was like, wait, why are you saying these words? Stop talking. Me, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, because going first obviously meant you're in the water the longest and you have to navigate. It was a super sketchy terrain. It wasn't just like a lake, beautiful lake where everybody could walk in. It was because there was only one little area that wasn't frozen so this was the area we were going in and so there was, it was rocky it was deep at some parts shallow at some parts so it was, it was pretty sketchy and so going in first meant like navigating that path yeah. 
And, and so, uh, you know, it felt right though. I said, leaders go first. I was like, cool, let's go. We'll do this. And, um, and then we line up in a big chain line. We, we grab hands and, and then my feet get to the edge of the water and, you know, I'm in a swimsuit. And, and then all of a sudden there's a little bit of a panic that sets in, not panic, but just a little bit of, oh shit. Like, yeah, you know, I realized what it actually meant going first is like, this is not going to be easy. But then something interesting happened. I looked back and I saw right behind me was my friend Bart and right behind him was my friend Tom, both guys that I met on this expedition. This was, you know, day four or five. So through doing things like this, you grow real unbreakable bonds with yeah. people. So I came to meet these guys like really like older brothers to me. And, and they were just strong men that like, I just, they have my back and they were right behind me. And then at that moment I realized, oh, okay, going first isn't as scary when you've got your number two and number three guys right behind you yeah. are, they're right behind you. And they're like, they, they got your back. Yeah. So that just alleviated any of the other hesitation I had. And, and we made our way in and, um, and you know, it was, it was very challenging to get in and we were communicating lots, rock over here, sharp edge here, big drop here. And I often, you know, I was at times like falling, be like, whoa, whoa, whoa don't go left but stay right. And the amount of focus you have to have as it's cold water. I mean, you know, sometimes wading into a pool at you know, 60 degrees can be cold. So this is, we're, we're talking to freezing temperatures yeah. here. So you, have to, you have to be really focused and, and we make our way in. The last person comes in and I link up, I link up with them and take a deep breath and we go into our immersion and, and, and come on out after. And it was uh, it was a really powerful experience for me. And as I was walking back, I was kind of digesting that and really realizing like, leaders go first. There's, there's an inherent price to pay that you have as a leader to go first. You're sacrificing yourself, the, the safety of yourself in a lot of ways, so that others, so that the people behind well, that's, me knew Yeah, that's walk. literally the definition of leadership. Like, right. to lead is to go first. To go first. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it was really interesting. And, and, and I started kind of thinking a little bit more about what does that, what does that really mean? How, do, how, how does that, how can I do that? How can I translate that? Because my whole mindset when I do these crazy expeditions and things is, is not necessarily what am I getting there and then, and how can I learn from it there, but how can I apply this to my life on a daily basis? How can I apply this to the coaching business? How can I apply this to working with my clients? And so it started kind of, you know, sinking my teeth into this, into this juicy, juicy idea of, of, of going first. And, and, and just, and it means so much because as coaches and leaders, like we go first. Well, I in, think, I think that's something that people ways. forget is like to be a coach is to be a leader. Yes. Right? They are, they are synonymous. You can't be a coach without leading, right? You're yep. the, the whole definition of a coach is to like lead others, serve others, right. help them get there where they want to go. So if you're not leading yourself as a coach, you can't lead others. You can't be a successful coach. Correct. And I, I remembered a motto from my, my, my senior year in high school, our football, our, our motto for, for our seniors was, are you willing to accept the risk of leadership? Yeah. I love that because there's, there's an inherent risk that comes with it of putting yourself out there going first. There's a risk that yeah. happens, but it, the, the cool part is when you go first, you, you earn the moral authority. This is something that John Maxwell says, going first earns you the moral authority to, to say, follow me. Yeah. Which is very powerful as a coach. That's why everybody, all, all of you that are coaches, that's why you coach is because you went first and, and you've, you've gained some experience. Same with you, know, with you Xander, with taking the plunge, the entrepreneurial plunge and, and leaving Cisco, quitting your job, starting your coaching business. You did that. You went first and that earns you the right to be able to say, hey, to look back and say, follow me. And that right, being able to say, follow me can change somebody's life in that instant. It's that yeah. certainty to say, hey, follow me. It's the certainty for me in that, in that lake in Iceland to be able to say, hey, put your hand here and watch your step to the left. Don't step down to the left. Make sure you grab this rock here. And, and then they, they do it without question. But if I'm standing out, outside of the water trying to guide them, like, okay, put your right hand here. You're like, no. And That's you not going to work. This, you rock, you yeah. rock climb. You know, if you're rock climbing and someone's like, right, right hand there, you're just like, dude, stop it. Like, you're not on this <laughs> wall. You don't know. But all of a sudden, if you're climbing ahead of me, now you're like, oh, put your foot there. You're like, okay, yes, sir. I'll put my foot right there. Yeah. So it's this really interesting concept around leaders going first. Yeah, I love that, man. Well, I think it's, it's one, of the biggest, one of the biggest problems that I see in the coaching industry right now is that everybody wants to be a coach, right? Everybody <laughs> wants to be a coach because they, they look at the, the freedom you can have as a coach. They look at the, uh, the you know, they look at the, yeah, the perks, the lifestyle that you can have as a coach. But just like you just mentioned, it's like, are they willing to take the risk of leadership? Right. Um, Right? Are they willing to take on that burden of truly leading others? Because that requires you as a person to grow and become bigger and more. And continuously too, as your clients grow. Constantly. 
constant. Every day. It's not a one-time thing. Yeah. <laughs> not, not even close. I, dude, I, I love that. Now, one of the things you and I were talking about, and I, I want to kind of hit on when it comes to leadership, is this idea. Uh, you, you mentioned you, you did a training on this for our clients the other day. Uh, but it's, do you want to be loved or do you want to be a leader? Right? Do you want to yeah. be loved or do you want to be a leader? And I love this idea. Um, so I'd love to get your take on, on what this means to you and kind of dig into that. Yeah, it's a really powerful question that, uh, again, can be super shattering for a lot of coaches to ask themselves, do you want to be loved or do you want to be a leader? Would you rather be popular or effective? Because oftentimes they're not, <laughs> you have to, there's a sacrifice that comes with it. Yeah. And, and to me, like being a leader means being so committed to the truth and, and this is something that, that you do a very, very good job of. And I mean, most of, most, of, most of the coaching that you do is really just telling people what they don't want to hear, but they need to hear. Yeah. And, and that's a really uncomfortable thing to do. I'm sure it's comfortable for you now, but you're always pushing the boundaries with it. But it's a very uncomfortable thing to do. It's a risky thing to do. Well, I think the, the interesting thing there, right, is like, um, you know, whenever it, whenever it comes up to me, it's like, whenever I think, whenever I think about it, 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 in general, it's the people, it's the things that people are not told. Yes. Why? Because other people want to soften the truth. They want to, you know, negate the truth, sidewind the truth to make you feel better. But because most of the time the truth hurts, right? Yeah. But everybody deep down knows the truth. And when you tell someone the truth, they can either accept it or they can reject it and make their mm -hmm. life a lot harder. But they know deep down that it's the truth. And once they right. realize it, that it's the truth and they accept that it's truth, they can change from there. They can grow. They can get better. Yeah, definitely. And there's a tactful way to do that, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a balance of, uh, as John Maxwell talks about, a balance of care and candor. Candor. You need a balance yep. of both. And we talk about in our coaching and, and, and our own internal team and the coaching trainings that we're, that we're doing for others as well is, is having this kind of, the, so what do you say? The soft front and the hard You have to back. have a soft front, a soft, caring front, but a really firm, direct, truthful back. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so something that's, yeah, it's something that's just, just totally interesting, but that, but that really like, you know, that, that's what that comes down to. And, and when it comes down to, you know, I, I relate this a lot and I talk with a lot of our clients about this when it comes down to sales and this whole sales process, but that's what, that's what sales is. Sales is you being a leader. Like they're yeah. not looking for another friend they're looking for a leader. And most of the time when I listen to, to client, you know, client sending in feedback or debriefing cert, certain um, call, sales calls that, that didn't end up in no's, so many, so much of the time I hear people, they're, they're, they're trying to be too buddy buddy or too friendly with the person and they're trying to build all this, all this rapport and they're trying to, and, and it's great, but they're robbing them of the opportunity to, to actually challenge them and to step up to the challenge and to actually lead them. And this is something I know because I did this for when I, yeah. <laughs> when I really calls that I want to be liked, right? It all comes I back to be being liked. Absolutely. And then there came a point where I had to ask myself, do I want to continue to be liked or do I want to be, do I want to be a leader? And I realized that a hundred percent, 10 times out of 10, I want to be a leader and I got to overcome this. And I think a lot of us coaches do. And I think you, you know, you go back to, and, and one of the things, you know, I, I always talk about, right, is like sales, coaching, and leadership are all the same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, people amen. don't realize this. They're like, oh, sales, yeah. is, sales is hard. I'm good at coaching, but sales is hard. No, you're a fucking terrible coach if you're bad at sales. <laughs> because you're just going to give, right. like, if, if your clients are coming to you and like, I need to do this and this and this, and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm here to like, like, rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, like, keep you like happy and positive and fucking motivated. That's not fucking coaching. Right? right. Like that's not coaching right. at all. That's just like a glorified dick holder. Sorry. That was, <laughs> we're just going straight for it right now. Um, the truth hurts. <laughs> the truth hurts guys. The truth hurts. But like true sales leadership and coaching are all the same thing. Right. And the way that I think about it, right. It's like, if you were to think like, if you were to think of the top coaches in the world, right. Like who's the top coach in the world, Tony Robbins. Right. Like Tony Robbins is like the, right. he's the behemoth of a business of, of coaching business. Do you think Tony Robbins gives, gives a fuck whether or not you like him? No, <laughs> he doesn't care at all. He doesn't care one cent because he knows what he's living is truth. And he knows it's going to help a ton of people. Right. right. And he's just going to live it so strongly and powerfully. And he's going to move forward with such conviction that people are going to follow. Yep. And it's that simple.
It's that simple. I love that. Something that something that my my dad always said in, in his leadership style and his technique, he says, lead me, follow me, or get the hell out of the way. <laughs> yeah. And I love that too. He's like, lead, if you lead, I'll follow. If 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 I lead, you better follow or get out of the way. Sit or stand, Just don't walk. Stop obstructing my my direction here. Exactly, exactly. So uh, so I think that that's that's definitely really and it's it is also it's it's so the same thing and it all all I think really what it does stem down to is it stems down to this conviction with the truth and this certainty that you can actually lead this person. So many people get caught up in that that they don't come up that they're they're they're, yeah. they're blocking themselves from leading. When how do you, so question for you, how do you think like, cause I do see this happen with a lot of coaches. How do you think coaches can start to get over this? Yeah. Um, honestly, like go, go, go into your fears in that way. Meaning that if you're, if you're afraid of somebody like, I, if you're afraid of somebody hanging up the phone on you because they don't like you, or you're afraid of a client, you giving a client so being so truthful to the client that they're not going to work with you, go try to do that thing. Because what you're going to find is it's, you're going to have a really hard time doing it. It's mostly just the story we're telling ourselves that like, yep. Oh, I'm holding back because if I do really say the truth right now, or if I do say what I feel like I need to say, then this person's not going to work with me or the, all these bad things are going to happen. or I'm going to get hung up on the phone. And when I ask them, how many times has that happened? They say, well, it hasn't actually happened. And I'm yeah. like, well, there you go. It's just a story you're telling yourself. Go try to do that thing that you're so scared about and realize how hard of a time you're actually going to have go to do push, it. Go push that boundary, push knock that, on the door, door open it up, see if it's it, actually going to happen or not. Exactly. And then we'll take it from there. We'll debrief from there. But if you go actually try to do that, you're going to have a hard time doing that. I promise you. I think so, one so of the things, the of the now, that, now that you bring that up, you know, one of the things that comes to me, it's like every time I go have a difficult conversation with one of our clients, and it's like, a, here's the deal. Here's A, B, and C. If you don't like it, like you can leave. Every time that conversation happens, we get more convicted clients that are like, like respect us more and get better results because they're more committed to taking the actions because nobody has ever given them the truth like that. That's it. They're so waiting for a leader. They're, they're not they're, looking for people friend. are literally waiting for a leader. They have enough friends. Yeah. They have they're enough friends. For the they're waiting just, for somebody to lead them forward. Yeah. And that's all it is. And that's, if you ask me, that's what sales is. If they're waiting for somebody to reach out their hand and say, Hey, I got you. Let's go. Come on. Follow me. I got you. Yeah. That's the, it. the words, the words that everybody wants to hear. I got you. Right. I got you. We got, got this. You got this. We got this. I got you. You're not alone anymore. Let's make this happen. Your, your excuses and bull, you know, it's bullshit. It's cute. I get it for sure. We're not gonna let this stop us. Come on. We know what we got to do here. Let's do it. That simple. I think that's, that true, that's true leadership and that's what coaching should be. Right. Then, right. Yeah. Just like you mentioned, that goes right back to sales too. Right. Yep. It's like when, when that person can finally have the belief and conviction in themselves, cause they're borrowing it from you as a leader. That's what it is. So, and as coaches, we, we obviously, I, th I think everybody can relate to some truth in this, that we teach what we most need to learn in a lot of different ways. And, and I think that that's something that as, as coaches, we can, it's, it's the, it's the, the, one of the many beautiful paradoxes that is in this comedy we call life, yeah. but it's all in a reflection game. It's all, it's all a reflection game. And when you get, and, and I've seen, cause I've seen this personally and I've seen this with clients when, when we're working on this together, but there's a shift that happens when you are certain in your ability to deliver value in your ability to lead the person that comes through. They feel that period yeah. that needs to happen every single time you're getting onto a phone call and you're half in half out. I don't know. I don't know about this. That's felt from a mile away. And that is the results are going to happen accordingly. But when you make that, when you focus on yourself and your leadership, your inner leadership on and your own conviction and your ability to, to, to deliver value to people, then the rest takes care of itself. It really, yeah, really we, we, you know, John, John Maxwell, you know, we talked about John Maxwell a couple of times here. Cause we like at high impact coaching, we go through John Maxwell programs to make sure everybody's always becoming a better leader. Uh, but you know, he has like the law of the lid, right? We talk about, um, you know, the law of the lid that John talks about is like, uh, people will not follow you, uh, that are above your level of leadership. So for example, on a scale mm -hmm. of one to 10, if you're a seven on the leadership scale, you will not get anybody to follow you that's higher than a six, right? Right. So you have to be an eight to get a seven. You have to be a nine to get an eight. You have to be a 10 to get a nine, 
right? So just like you mentioned, like you have to be working on that conviction yourself. You have to be working on that drive yourself. Cause if you don't have it, people won't follow you. You won't get right. clients. clients. That's what clients are. Clients are followers, right? Yeah. So, so if you're not stepping up your game as a leader, you're not going to get new clients. You're not going to get new followers. And you're sure as yeah. hell not going to get those like A plus clients that rock their shit because right, you're the right. best leader that deserves them. Yeah. And as a CEO as well, like for you, for example, like you consistently, I mean, I'm kind of shocked to think that it's almost three years and I'm st we're still working together. Like, honestly, that was a not- brainwashed you. A brainwashed well, you. Yeah, exactly. Back to bitch. No, but what you, I'll tell you what you did is that you, you helped grow and you helped me develop into this leader myself while consistently raising the lid yourself because if you stayed at the level that you were when we first started working together then there's no way like because i would have outgrown that i would have yeah. outgrown you very quickly but you are continuously growing at the same pace that you're bringing me up and you're helping me grow and i'm developing and so that's why it's like you're you're an amazing leader and, I'm, and we're working together and, and i love working for you and with you because you keep raising that lid. So the same thing if you're a business owner and you have employees and stuff, it's constantly about raising that lid. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's important for everybody to understand because everybody, like everybody always, ask, you know, they always ask like, Xander, what does it take for me to build a, a six figure business or a seven figure business? And you know, the first question is always like, do you deserve to have a, like, are you that level of leader yet? Right. Right. Are you, are you like, are you deserving of six figure problems? Because you have to be <laughs> like that. that level of leader to be deserving of six figure problems to have a Love six it. figure business, right? If you want seven figures, you have to be that level of leader that is deserving of seven figure problems because seven figure problems are not smaller than six figure problems. They are 10 times fucking larger than six figure problems. Do the math. It's very simple, <laughs> right? So it, That's it's it. It's so funny to me because your level of leadership is going to dictate the level of problems you can handle. And the level of problem that you can handle is going to dictate the size of your business. So you know, it, all, it all comes back to that, like you as a leader, who are you as a leader? How are you growing as a leader to become the person you need to become to deserve that six, multiple six or seven figure business? I love that. That's a great soundbite right there. <laughs> Beautiful. Any, any other last tidbits of wisdom on on leadership for our audience joshua i mean i could, um, we could probably keep talking on this for like hours but like, i'm pretty sure like, i've got a call coming up here that we need to get to so <laughs> yeah exactly like like anything we could we could talk for days about um i think it's um i think it's it's really really just asking yourself that like actually sitting down and asking yourself that question of like are you willing to accept the risk of leadership and fully fully do it and I think a lot of people, most people, most coaches that I, that I, that I work with and talk with, they're kind of teetering on the edge, yeah. but something really, really amazing and remarkable and miraculous happens when you decide to really step into that and fully understand, yeah. hey, I might not be loved, but I'm okay with that. I might not be popular, but I can be effective and I'm willing to accept the risk of leadership. If you fully buy into that, like actually just buy, give it 30 days, fully buy into that for 30 days and see how, see how your business and your life completely changes. Beautiful. I love that, man. I think that's a, I think that's a great way to end. Uh, thank you for that one, Joshua, for everybody out there listening in podcast land. If you want to catch this live, uh, go ahead and join, uh, our Facebook group at xanderfryer.com forward slash FB group. Uh, for everybody else, uh, if you're interested in learning about how we can help you become a better leader, uh, and scale your business, uh, go to xanderfryer.com forward slash apply and we can set up 15 minutes to see if we can help you take your business to that six figure, multiple six figure, even seven figure mark uh, this year. So uh, Joshua, again, thank you for joining us. Looking forward to the next thank time you, we get to chat about this stuff. Absolutely. All right, guys. Take care.